medical advances in modern surgical techniques such as cancer treatments, organ transplants, and open heart surgery have increased the need for blood. Depending on patients' needs, a whole blood donation may be separated into several different components, which may be used to treat a variety of medical conditions or illnesses. Several patients may benefit from one whole blood donation. Whole blood donations go to our laboratory, where specially trained staff separate the blood into components. Blood is made up of components, sort of like the different parts of an automobile engine, and each has a job to do. Some donors are asked to give an apheresis donation of red blood cells, platelets, plasma, or another blood component. In an apheresis donation, whole blood is collected, the needed component is separated in the machine right next to the donor's chair, and the remainder of the blood is returned to the donor. Red blood cells carry oxygen throughout the body. Red blood cells are often used during surgery and to help patients who are anemic. Red blood cells must be refrigerated and used within 42 days after they're collected. Because red blood cells have such a short shelf life, it's important to continually restock the supply. That's why blood centers encourage donors to give several times during the year. Plasma is the golden, liquid portion of the blood. It provides clotting factors that help control bleeding for surgery and trauma patients. It is stored frozen as long as one year. Platelets are another component of blood. They help blood to clot and are most often used to treat leukemia and cancer. They are stored at room temperature on a rack that moves constantly. Platelets have a short shelf life, just a few days. No wonder blood centers often call donors as soon as they're eligible to give again. The platelet supply must be continually restocked. The last component of blood is called cryoprecipitate. It is a concentrate of clotting factor that is used to control massive bleeding during surgery or trauma care. Cryoprecipitate is frozen and must be used within a year. While components collected by apheresis or automation are prepared as the donor gives, whole blood donations are separated into components in the laboratory. We begin by weighing each blood donation and spinning it in a centrifuge. The centrifuge looks like a big washing machine and, like a washing machine, has different spin speeds. Red blood cells are heavier, so they sink to the bottom. The plasma is on top. We use an expressor, sort of like a big clamp, to squeeze the plasma into a second bag, called a satellite bag, that's connected to the main blood bag. Then we seal off the bag of red cells and put it into the refrigerator. This process is always conducted in a closed system to ensure the components remain sterile. At this point, we can store the plasma, or depending on the spin speed we used, we can repeat the process to make platelets. Cryoprecipitate is made by gradually thawing frozen plasma. This allows the clotting factor, referred to as factor 8, to precipitate out of the liquid. The thawed plasma is spun to force the precipitate to the bottom of the bag, then expressed into a separate bag, leaving the precipitate. The blood center decides which components to make depending on the number and kind of components they have in inventory and what hospital usage is expected to be. Blood centers work closely with the hospitals they serve to determine how much of each component they need to have on hand. And then they reach out to donors and blood drive sponsors to make sure donations are scheduled to meet those needs.